So today we're going to be working on an error trap. Now, an error trap is an algorithm that prevents your user from entering unpredictable data. And the reason why we don't want this is because it creates what's called a runtime error. Now, runtime error is something that happens during the running of the program. So it means that the program actually compiles and the logic is correct, but usually it's something that like the user, something happens that was unexpected and causes a crash or some unexpected behavior. So what we can do is we can set up an error trap and that forces our user to do what we want so that they can't uh, do something unexpected and therefore cannot create a runtime error. Okay, so let's consider the following code here. So in this code, I've got a number and I prompt the user to enter a number between 1 and 10. I take in the number and I echo it back. Right, so it's pretty simple. Okay, but when I run it, oh, um, when I run it here, then I'm asking for a number between 1 and 10, but I can put in a 0 and it, the program will be fine with it. Similarly, I could put a 14 and the program's fine with that as well. Now, you may be saying like, well, what's the big deal? It seems to be working. Well, let's say for instance, uh, this program was a division program and this was going to be a divisor, right? Then, well, if I enter a zero, then I have division by zero and that could mess up my whole program. And so I don't want them to be able to do that. So what I wanna do is make sure that this number is actually between one and 10. Now. The simplest way to do this is to actually just bury this into a do while loop. Okay, so what I can do is I can actually just put this into a do while like this and just say while the number is less than one or number greater than 10. Now, a better way to do this, um, if you, well, the way I prefer, I guess, would be to set a max max here is equal to 10 and min is equal to one. Okay, so instead of just saying one, I can just say min and here I can say max, all right? So this way I can just change my max and min up here and it won't make any difference. Okay, and let's take a look. So if I enter a zero, right, it goes back and asks me again. And if I enter an 11, okay, it asks me again and so on and so forth. So it seems to work, and this is actually a very elementary form of error trap, which is, you know, it's okay. But the problem is if I enter something like this, like a nine, okay, and what I get is, well, this infinite loop. Okay, now in order to fix this, what we have to do is kind of understand what's going on to cause the problem in the first place. Okay, so what happens is we have this situation here. Okay, so here we have, imagine that we have our keyboard over here, and all the data that goes into the keyboard goes into this pipe. And this is called the data stream that's traveling through the pipe. So I have, if I enter a nine, what happens is the, the CPU, so the computer, asks, the, asks C in, so the label this guy, C in, right, to take his little variable bucket and go to the pipe and retrieve the nine. Okay, so this nine, okay, is gonna go with CN into the variable bucket, if I can grab it there. Okay, so he's gonna grab that nine, okay, and he's gonna take it back to CPU or to the program and that's, and everything is good, all right? But what happens if we have a situation where a word comes in? Okay, so let's say we give, a word like this, six. Okay, so this is sitting in the pipe, okay, in the stream. Well, what happens is CN comes over and sees that there's this word there. He can't, because he's carrying an integer, an integer variable, he cannot get this out of there. Okay, so this six can't come out of the pipe. So what happens is CN has this good flag and the flag actually turns into bad. Well, not good. All right, so, okay, so we can actually just put that and just say, not good, All right? So then CN goes back to the main program, right? And says, well, I don't have anything. Well, because it's in a while loop, the while loop will cause the CN to go back, 
and then see it's bad and it says oh there's a six there i can't get that out the word six so it goes back and just keeps going back and forth because of the while loop and that's why you get this infinite this infinite uh, looping right that's going to cause a problem so how do we fix this okay well the first thing we got to do is we got to go and clean up cn okay so cn's not going to be able to do its job because it's bad okay so what we have to do is we have to go and clear out cn so let's go do that okay so what we're going to do is we are going to say that's annoying sorry it's my that's just extremely annoying okay so we are going to say if now there's two ways to write this you can say cn dot good that's checking the good flag for cn is equal to false okay now if now how could cn's good flag turn false well what ha would have to happen is that probably the wrong type of data was there okay so well what do we do well what do we do what we do is we say cn dot clear okay and that's to reset its flag that means that we are going to go and clear this flag out which clears this exclamation away so cn's feeling okay again now the problem is as soon as cn goes back to the pipe it's going to turn bad again because there's a six there so instead what we have to do is we have to go and uh, give cn something else so what we're going to do is we're going to say string garbage so we're going to make a new variable that's a string and the reason why we make a string is because a string can hold any type of data okay and that's just going to be a garbage and then we're going to say cn garbage so we're going to use the garbage variable and put the data into that garbage right and then what will happen is that um, it will come down here and well we'll see okay so let's see what happens you say okay enter a number between one and ten if the person puts six so six into the stream then cn will turn uh false right cn's good will turn false and then it will clear it grab a new variable this the garbage string right and then it will read it into the garbage string which will then just get thrown away right now we want to be able to loop back so what we do is we say or cn dot good is equal to false and i'm missing some parentheses there Okay, so we say or cn good is equal to false. Now, there is a better way to write this. Most people will actually write it this way. So just not cn good. Okay, so not cn good. Okay, you can write it either way. So when cn is not good, it will clear clear the stream or clear its flags, clear the stream, come down here, cn good will not be true. So then it will come back up here right and it'll enter a number cn is good um what's it called then this will this will all clear up now here's the problem is that if we do it in this order cn's flag will be good so let's take a look follow the code so if a six gets six a word gets entered here then cn will turn false but what will happen is that here we clear it back to good right away so it won't get picked up in the while loop so what we have to do is actually we do the prompt after the fact. Okay, so let's take a look. When we first come in, CN good will be true, so this will uh, so this will skip. Then, if we put in a word in the input, then number uh, CN number will make CN good to be false, right? This will happen, not CN good. We'll come back up and then we will clean out the stream, right? And then ask again. Okay, and that is simple error trap or a more complex error trap. Okay, so let's take a look here. And we have, let's say, 11. So that's still caught. Zero is still caught. Random text, still caught. Okay, a five, five is totally fine. And that's how we can use an error trap to prevent the user from entering bad data. Anyways, that's it. If you have any questions, please put a comment in the comment section. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next video.